Good morning. I'm higher vibrations and so are you. Wow, what a week, what a month, what a year, what a decade. We have so much happening right now. Many of us are having such an increased ascension symptom experience that it can be alarming. We immediately go to a place of fear when we're having heart palpitations, when our heart starts to beat in such a way. This has really been a common experience the past probably seven years, but it's been happening for a lot longer. Um, right now, it's just there's more of us in this awakening experience, so there's more experience with it. If you do have any concerns, see a medical professional. This heart palpitation is usually associated with something that like an area of your body um, is heating up or cooling off. Usually for me, I notice that it's heating up. Um, there's a healing happening at this time. This self-healing that we're able to do is coming online more. Also included with that, we'll notice spasms, muscle twitching. We'll notice like even Charlie horses in certain areas of our body that have been injured in the past or are being in, are in distress now. And during that same time, you'll have the heart palpitations. These are healings. There are other things that happen with the heart palpitations. For instance, you get a lot of upgrades. And when the energy comes in through these solar flares, we do have a lot of heart-related activity. This can have a result of an adrenaline dump. And so our body starts to shake and to shiver. This is a separate occurrence from what I'm going to say next is then there's also an ascension symptom where we have a vibration sensation in our body. This vibration sensation typically happens in the core, though it does happen throughout the entire body. The sensation of feeling like you're vibrating, like you're, you're not shaking exactly, but, but slightly. Yes. Um, this is something that a lot of people are having happen. Um, while this energy moves through us, moves up and down, there's this, uh, any kind of resistance is it, it's shaking out. This is a transmutation that that's occurring. It's pretty amazing when it can be understood what's happening at that time. We'll also notice vibration in the lower, lower torso in the pelvic region. There's this vibration occurrence. And again, that can be alarming and also, you know, kind of inconvenient <laughs> in a public situation. You know, so this is another one of those things. Our root chakra is waking up a lot more than it was before. Many of us spent so much time focusing on our upper, our heart chakra, our throat chakra, our third eye, and our, our, our crown chakra that a lot of these lower three chakras have not been really um, addressed like they'd like to be. And as a result, there's some stuff going on with this. So we have this root chakra stuff, which is the lower area in the pelvic region as well as the sacral chakra, the, the sunset orange one that is just below the navel. Above the navel, we have the solar plexus, this golden yellow one. These areas of our body, we're having a lot of symptoms with. That feels like we're pregnant. People are noticing what they're calling Buddha belly. Just all of a sudden, your stomach swells for a short time. Um, we're also noticing a lot of organs in the vicinity of these chakras being affected. Um, like gallbladder, liver, kidneys, and so on. And the place in the organ of, of the liver is an example I use a lot. And that's where most people are having the experience with this almost always is coming, bringing forward the emotion that is the anger, the unresolved, unsensed, unexperienced anger that just needs to be able to be let go, to be released. In this area, we also have the gallbladder that's being affected. And a lot of times when that's coming forward, we're, we feel like we're going to throw up. We feel nauseous. We feel, you know, unsettled in our stomach. And this is a lot to do with this chakra as well as the, the solar plexus as well as the sacral chakra. These two areas are really a big deal right now. Um, having the, the ear ringing and, stu and stuff like that is still very, very common. We're also having experience with this weird tingly wingly stuff on our skin, you know, and, and it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. Actually, it's kind of a soothing sensation if we can be okay with, with what it is. And a lot of us don't know. And so to let you know, you're feeling the energies, you're feeling the energies and it's beautiful. It's blissful. It's euphoric. It's love. You're being touched by love. And it's really cool. It's coming to help us. Um, one of the things that a lot of us are noticing the most right now have to do with being impacted by these solar flares when they come in. For me, it's the upper gum 
my the upper gum in my mouth, the gums. Um, like there's a headache in my gums, it feels like. Um, a lot of times there's also a, a actual headache in my head while that's happening too. And and while that's occurring, I just need to lay down. I just need to lay down. I'm so tired, but I'm not tired and I need to lay down. Exhaustion is a thing. It's consistent, profound exhaustion. You know, so many of us are coming through with these amazing dreams, a new lucidity, as well as a, a surprising amount of recollection for these particular dreams that we hadn't had perhaps in the past. It's a new thing, so it's kind of exciting and also why, why is this happening? It's already been happening, it's just that you're able to access it more now as your logic has been able to move out of the way just enough to experience things and to allow yourself to trust. We're also having these other kind of headaches that are occurring that um, tend to be like a band around the head, though it usually is one side or the other or the center. I'm having a lot of itchiness on my third eye area, the third eye being really itchy. I don't know, it's been something that's been happening for a couple of days. There's often these this residue left behind by the different toxins that we've picked up along the way that that is that leaves our pineal gland and just needs to be directed in meditation down to our lower abdomen into our bowels so it can be it can leave and so when we're having these experiences lots of like brain fog like just disconnected kind of feeling kind of just like staring out kind of feeling um vocabulary loss is often associated with this as well what i mean by vocabulary loss is perhaps having a very well put together sentence though can't remember the word spoon or it you know like really simple words are seeming to be the most difficult to access you know and these are fleeting moments though it's just fascinating to watch as it occurs I've noticed that when I've done these kind of clearings, like I had suggested, guiding these densities down into your bowel so they can then leave you at later time, um, that that will assist and make this these things be a little bit more easier to do when it comes to this brain stuff. Um, this other sensation that a lot of people are talking about is the skin thing. So there's a lot of areas to cover when we talk about the skin. Um, Typically, it has to do with purging, purging of toxins. And remember this, you know, this is something that's been coming through a lot. So it's kind of an insistent message is that you are holding in your body, or at least you had before you started to purge some of these toxins from your body, all the toxins that your grandmother had, because the egg that became you was in your mother's belly when she was in her mother's belly, your grandmother. And so consider that line of toxins that we're purging from our system. A lot of us are seeing this purging happening through actual vomiting or the desire to vomit through weird skin stuff like acne that's just uncommon for your age group, perhaps. We're also noticing um, these skin patches of these areas where there's like, it looks like sores, but they're just kind of deep sores and then they go away. There's a lot of itchiness about this when it happens too as well as we're also having this strange sweat, this sweat that's coming out of our pores that has nothing to do with like actual sweat. It doesn't feel, the texture isn't correct for sweat. It's, it's it may be sweat, but carried with sweat is, have, is something else that needs to be, needs to leave your system, needs to leave your body. Um, I'm having a lot of ear related stuff. So like weird so acne like stuff inside all the way around my ear, just untypical stuff I'm talking about. Um, this isn't that I have poor hygiene or anything like that. You know, this is this purging that's happening. I've also noted a lot, noticed a lot of stuff coming off here, these two corners of my eyebrows and the, as well as the third eye area. There's a lot happening with the third eye right now in the brow area. So that's very fascinating. When we go to the mouth, we have a lot of throat chakra stuff here, sinuses, draining, noticing that it's actually affecting us in a way. Like I'm noticing I have like this <clears throat> kind of, there's a, there's almost something at the top of my lungs, I feel. And I did believe this is this draining, this purging that's been happening through the sinuses, as well as dental and oral trauma, um, things happening with our teeth. Other individuals talking about the, the just perfectly healthy teeth, never having a problem. All of a sudden, they're losing teeth, you know, and, and this is something that a lot of people are having right now. This is all this throat chakra stuff. We're having thyroid and thymus kind of stuff, you know, all of this throat area. 
And I've noticed that it started to do it again, you know, and, and usually it's triggered by some of these solar flares. Remember when the solar flare comes in, this solar flare is activating some dormant DNA inside of you. This dor dormant DNA that's always been there. These 12 strands, not two, 12 strands of DNA that have always been available to you, just somehow locked away, just, just out of access, just on a shelf, just too tall for us to reach. Well, now we're able to reach it more easily. And so as we start to do this, we start to notice some things, having sight, suddenly being able to see things, orbs, shadows, colors, flashes of light, movement of shadows. These shadows aren't always, and they're less light, less often something that is of a lower density frequency that allow yourself to use your heart chakra to feel. How do they feel? Do they feel like they're from love? That that emotion that you bring up, that sense that you bring up when you're thinking of this, this individual that you love so much and what it's like right there, right here in your heart as it comes up before you say, I love you. That's what I mean when I say send love to it. Send that out to it. And if it is of love, it will answer back with love and more. If it is not of love, it will flee. Along with all of this happening, we're also noticing our ability to psychically connect more, realizing that those conversations we had time and time again in the shower, you're actually having this energetic conversation with the other individual and perhaps they're in their shower having the same kind of thing. These types of interactions don't always have to be negative. You know, we can engage with one another now in a higher way in a way that is of this highest frequency and so it's of love and it's an exchange. We share parcels of information rather than words. And so much more is understood in a moment than could be understood in, in hours of conversation. And it's so beautiful and pure. Um, as these psychic abilities are starting to come on, we're also noticing the ability to leave our body energetically, to go and explore. They call this astral projection. Um, other things that we're beginning to learn to do is called remote viewing. And that is when you're like in a peaceful state or a meditative type of type of a state, being able to go someplace else energetically and to interact and to participate while conscious in this body someplace else. It's kind of fun and it's exciting. And it's also, you know, there's a lot of questions involved around this. And in the end, it's just all works the way that it's meant to. This back stuff, the back and shoulder stuff, a lot of people are learning right now about their energetic wings that we all have. Many have several sets of wings. Not always are they exactly wings either. Some people view it and see it as, as it looks like almost like lightning or energy, electricity wrapping from behind them. And so the sensation of this pain in the shoulder here and down the back that goes up the neck on either side you know, or this, or one or the other. And, and noticing also overcompensating, leaning to one side, favoring one side of your body over the other, just as if you were carrying extra weight. This is us figuring out what it's like to be in this body with this other appendage. And so allowing yourself the grace and the joy, the honor of giving yourself a break, being gentle with yourself, and it's okay. Give yourself time. Right now, during this period, we're in a transition period. We're somewhere in between one point and the next. And while we do this transition, there's a sense of instability. There's a, an increased need for quiet, for rest, for alone time, for this place that you can just be in your own energy. So if that's possible for you to do, it's highly encouraged. You know, meditating at least five minutes a day will really help. Truly, just allowing the white light to wash over you. This is similar to brushing your teeth or combing your hair. It's a daily activity, cleaning off the dust of the, the world around you that it's kind of attached as you've gone from your day-to-day -day life and allowing this stuff to just be moved off. It doesn't really want to be there either. We're having hip stuff. We're having weird pelvic stuff. This is all this root chakra. There's so much root chakra stuff coming out right now. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Our root chakras want to dig the energy, the light down into the soil like roots and go into Gaia. 
go into the space of love and calm, into a mother's womb where you can be embraced and loved and understood how strong and powerful you are in this beautiful nurturing way with the mother and the joy and protection, the safety, allowing yourself to guide yourself into medita in meditation into this place will really help. A lot of weird appetite stuff has been going on. It's been kind of crazy and very unpredictable from day to day. Whether we will have an appetite at all or if we'll be fully on in the binge wanting to eat everything. It's, it's amazing. As we're doing this, just listen to your body. I've been noticing that I've been going days without eating food. And then all of a sudden, I'm hungry. <laughs> Get out of the way. You know, kind of hungry. Um... And this is okay. You know, our diets have changed so much lately. Over the past several years, I've gone from a full-on carnivore to a basically vegan. I say basically because there are occasional days where my body asks me for something else, something that's not typical on my diet. Sometimes that's because my body needs to purge. And it knows that if I eat this thing that my body's not used to, then it will go straight through me along with anything else that needs to leave quickly and move through my body. Sometimes it's actually something that my body needs to hold on to and to absorb the minerals or whatever's within it, you know. And so listening to our bodies in this way really does help, though the foods come and go and changing, listening to our bodies, going out into Gaia, putting our bare feet on her soil, in her grass, in the sand, in the water. This really helps in so many different ways. If you are in a region of the planet where you can't do that, it's too cold or it's not available, Having a small amount of dirt in the home that you can just rest your feet up upon really helps. It doesn't have to be a deep container either. Just enough that it covers the soles of our feet. The place that the pores of our, our body are the biggest there. Hands are second. You know, so there's a reason that the, we have these pads, our hands and our feet. This is to help ionize. This is to help absorb into earth. If this practice is called earthing now where you go and you stand upon the earth. This really helps. Um, connecting with water really helps as well. Other things a lot of us are noticing is these, these solar flares are coming in. And there's a lot of distress, calamity, and alarm. And then this sense of emotion that doesn't seem like yours. Well, guess what? It's not yours. It's not yours to decipher what it's for either. It's not meant that for that. It needs to just go. And you're a channel, you're a conduit for it to leave upon being the light that you are. It is guided to you. And so allow it to just move through and out. I've had a couple of surges myself of frustration, irritability, and anger. Though very fleeting, some people are having it where it's staying around a long time or for a time, along with depression and anxiety, panic, this sensation of alarm. It's not anything to do with you. This is not yours. While it comes through, simply this is. This exists without judgment. We're not deciding anything about it. I see you and now I guide you out with love and let it go. Allow it to move out of you, move through you and out where it wants to go anyway. These other sensations that we're experiencing um, with the, these solar flares is this sense of euphoria, of bliss, of celebration, of gratitude, of utter joy, of peace finally settling in. And just because you're in a place right now where you're clearing something out, where there's a little bit of healing left to do, doesn't mean that you're going to miss on the bliss. The bliss is here. It is so beautiful. Allowing ourselves to cry is one of the most powerful release mechanisms you have. It's a superpower. To deny yourself that doesn't make any sense any longer. I used to. I went through years of my life where I wouldn't cry. And now I get excited when it comes because I know the reward that comes from it. To tears of joy, tears of sadness and mourning. And that's, that leads me into the last thing to mention today is the mourning. Many of us are sensing this, this feeling of grief, of mourning, of loss. We are mourning. We're mourning the place that we're leaving behind. 
in this transition period, in this feeling unknown, this disorientation, this listlessness of what do I need to do now? You need to play. Allow yourself to play and allow yourself to experience these emotions. We're leaving something behind that we may not have enjoyed. This energy that we're moving out of is something that you've known for many, many lifetimes. And of course, you're going to mourn it when you leave. You may be graduating from the worst high school ever, right? And you still, there's a mourning that happens there. Whether or not it's acknowledged or admitted. Allowing yourself to have this mourning, to mourn it to grieve it and be okay with this sensation that's happening so it can be released. When we ignore something versus let it move through us, then we're imprisoning it. Let's not keep that sticking around any longer than we have to, right? Being in love and being in peace and being in a grateful heart is the result of this work. It is such a beautiful place, this new world, so full of joy and of connection, and of this heart center communication, of this bliss, a place absent of lack, absent of calamity, balance. There's a little bit more work to do. That's it. Here at the beginning of the precipice, moving into the next couple of days, into the 25th. There's going to be a lot more of these experiences occurring. Please know that you're not alone. You're not. We are connected. Like we really are truly connected. Our hearts are one. They've come from the same heart. They are the same heart. Please don't give up. This part might feel rough for some of you. It's worth it. We're there. We're really there. I love you so much. Thank you for your service. Aho blessings.